we're going to look at addition and subtraction of rational expressions. Before we do that, we're just going to quickly review how do you add and subtract fractions. Well, now when we have like denominators, so when our denominators are the exact same, we just add or subtract across the top. So in this case, we would take our 5 plus 4 and get a 9, and then our 7 would stay. We do not add the denominators. We do the same type of thing when we have um, rational expressions. So I have my denominators are identical already, so I can go ahead and just add my tops together. So I would have 3x plus x would give me a 4x, and then I would have 7 plus negative 8 would give me a negative 1, and then my denominator just stays as x plus 2. Here's one that has the same denominators again, an addition, so I add across the top. Well, my 4x plus 5, I cannot combine those, so I just have to leave it as 4x plus 5. They weren't like terms, so they're just going to be written out like that. And the last one for this slide, I've got my exact same denominators, but now notice I have a minus sign here. When you have a minus sign, what you want to do is change it to a plus and then take the opposite of everything in the back. So I'm going to do it as plus negative 4x squared, negative 5x, and a positive 6. You're going to be less likely to make a mistake if you change it to a plus and then take the opposite of everything in here. So now I've got 2x squared and a negative 4x squared, so that's going to give me a negative 2x squared. I'm going to cross them out as I go. I don't have anything to combine with this negative 5x, so it's just going to stay negative 5x. And then I've got a 5 and a 6. It's going to give me an 11. And then my denominator is just 3x minus 8. So I never add my denominators. Okay, when we have unlike denominators, we first need to find our LCD, which is our least common denominator. If you recall, from quite a while ago, to find our least common denominator, we need to factor our numbers. So like 30 could break down into 3 and 10. The 3 is prime, and then the 10 can break down into a 2 and 5. So it would factor into 3, 2, and 5. Now my 20, when I break that one down, I can break that down into 10 and 2. And then the 10 I'm going to break down into 2 and 5. The 2 is prime, so it just gets to come down. Now when I do my least common denominator, I have to have everything accounted for somewhere. So when I look at my first group here, I have to have a 3 times a 2 times a 5. That takes care of all those. Now when I jump to my second group, there's a 2 right here. Well, I've already got that accounted for right there, so I don't need to have that one again. Now this 5, I've already got that accounted for right there. I don't need to have it again. This 2, though, I have to have. Now, you might be looking at this saying there's a 2 right there, but we already matched that up with a 2 in the same group, so I do need to have another 2 here. When I multiply those all together, I get 60. So my least common denominator for these two are 60. And what I can do now is change those denominators into 60. Well, in order to do that, I need to take this times 2 over 2, and I need to take this one times 3 over 3. Now that I've got the same denominators, I can go ahead and add them. So I would end up with 49 over 60. On the second one, we're still going to have to do the same type of thing. My denominators are not the same, so I need to find my least common denominator. Well, when I look at this denominator and try to factor it, I can't factor it, so I have to have the family of 2x plus 1 as part of my denominator. When I look at my second denominator, it doesn't factor either, so I have to have x plus 1. Now notice the 1's don't overlap because these are families. They have to go together. You have to take all or nothing. So my least common denominator for this is 2x plus 1 times x plus 1. So now when I go to change my fractions to have the common denominator, I have to ask myself, how, what do I have to multiply by to get my denominator to be this exact thing? Well, it already has the 2x plus 1, so I need to multiply it by x plus 1 on the top and on the bottom. My second one, 
it already has the x plus 1, so I need to multiply it by 2x plus 1, because that's what it's missing. And I have to multiply it on the top and on the bottom. Well, when I look at these multiplications, I have two FOIL problems on the top. I need to multiply my tops out. The bottoms I'm not going to multiply out. So when I FOIL the first one, I'm going to have 5x squared minus 7x plus 5x minus 7. That's my first fraction. When I FOIL out the second one, I'm going to have 6x squared plus 3x plus 8x plus 4 and then I still have my denominators. Now you don't multiply your denominators out. We just leave them written in their factored form. The reason that I multiply out my numerators is because I need to be able to actually add them. And in order to add them, I have to figure out what my like terms are. So now I can go back and I can combine like terms. So I've got 5x squared plus 6x squared. That'll give me 11x squared. I have a negative 7x plus 5x, so that'll give me a negative 2, plus 3x plus 8x, so that'll turn out to be 9x's. And then I have minus 7 plus 4, that will end up giving me a minus 3. And on the bottom, I'm still left with my x plus 1 times my 2x plus 1. Once I get to this part, I've gotten it all down to one fraction. I still need to go and check to see if I can factor this top. So my numerator didn't factor out, so I have to leave it like this for my answer. With our third one here, we're going to start by getting our LCD. Well, I need to factor both of my denominators first, and as I look at this one, I notice that it factors into x plus 1 and x minus 1. Looking at my second denominator, it doesn't factor at all. So my least common denominator for this one, I'm going to have x plus 1, x minus 1 from my first group. And then as I look at my second one here, it's already taken care of right there, so I don't need to add another one. So my least common denominator is x plus 1, x minus 1. I am going to multiply by whatever is missing. Well, in my first fraction here, I have 3x minus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1. It's not missing anything, so it gets to just be left alone. My second one here is missing the x minus 1 portion. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by x minus 1. So my first fraction is going to be 3x minus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1, minus, now I need to FOIL these two together, so I'm going to have 2x squared minus 2x plus 5x minus 5, all of that over x plus 1, x minus 1. And our general rule of thumb is we don't multiply our denominators together. We leave them factored, factored out. Simplify this, and I'm going to have 2x squared plus 3x minus 5, so I combined my like terms there. And now I can go ahead and do the subtraction across the top. Now again, remember, on these subtraction problems, change it to a plus and then take the opposite of everything that's in here. It's going to save you making some mistakes. When I start looking at things that I can combine, I can't combine anything with my negative 2x squared, so it's just going to stay as a negative 2x squared. 3x plus a negative 3x, that cancels out to be a 0. And then negative 2 plus 5 cancels out to be a plus 3. Then my denominator I'm going to leave as x plus 1 times x minus 1. Last thing I want to check is if I can factor out my numerator. And as I look at that, it's two terms. It doesn't follow any of my patterns, so that is done. Okay, here's two practice problems. The first one is like denominators, the second one is not. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can get both of these two worked out. On the top one, since it was a subtraction problem, you should have changed it to a plus and then changed the signs of everything in between there. And negative 3x squared minus 2x over 7y. All you could do for pulling out of the top was pull out an x, and you would have negative 3x minus 2 over 7y. And there's nothing else that cancels, so that's where you have to stop with that one. 
The second one here, a little bit trickier. I factored everything on the bottom, so the 6 I factored into 2 and 3. The x squared is really x times x. 4x squared minus 12x, I first factored into 4x times x minus 3. Then I factored that 4 down into 2 and 2. So I had 2, 2x, and x minus 3. My least common denominator, I took my 2, my 3, my x, and my x first. Then I went to my next group. Well, one of these 2's lined up right here, so it was already counted, but I needed a second 2 in there, so I put a second 2. My x was already accounted for, so I didn't have to have an additional one there. And then I was completely missing the x minus 3, so I had to add that. My least common denominator ends up being 12x squared times x minus 3. So now I have to go over here and I have to ask myself, what do I need to multiply the bottom by to get 6x squared to be 12x squared times x minus 3? Well, in order to get the 6 to a 12, I need to multiply it by 2. The x squared is already x squared, so that's good. And then the x minus 3 is totally missing. So my first fraction, I need to multiply by 2 times x minus 3. My second fraction, same concept here. To get the 4 to be a 12, I need to multiply by 3. To get the x to be an x squared, I need to multiply by an x. And then the x minus 3 is already there. So this one I need to multiply by 3x. Now I can go back and I can multiply. So 2x minus 6 is what that multiplies into. And then I need to take that times the 5 on my top, so I end up with 10x minus 30. I have to distribute that 5 throughout. On the bottom, I shouldn't have multiplied that bottom out. On the bottom, I should have my 12x squared times x minus 3. My second fraction, I need to take my x times my 3x, so I get 3x squared. And on the bottom, I end up with 12x squared times that x minus 3 again. Now that I have the exact same denominators, I can go ahead and combine my numerators. When I combine my numerators, there aren't any like terms, so I'm just going to write it in standard form. I'm going to have 3x squared plus 10x minus 30 and that's all going to be over my 12x squared times x minus 3. You'd want to check to see if you can factor out the numerator of this one, and it doesn't look like it's going to, so that would be it. Okay, here's another practice problem. Do the same thing. Factor out the denominators and find that LCD, and then see if you can get the subtraction portion of it done. So go ahead and pause the video. All right, this one, I factored the first polynomial into x plus 2, x plus 2. The second one was x plus 2 and x minus 2. So my least common denominator was x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2. Then I went back to my fractions, and I looked at my first fraction here. I rewrote it here in the blue, and I asked myself, what was missing from the denominator? Well, the x minus 2 was, so I multiplied the top and the bottom by that piece that was missing. Then I went to my next one and I asked myself what was missing. Well, there's an x plus 2 missing, so I multiplied the top and the bottom by x plus 2. Then down here in the green, I foiled to get the x squared minus x minus 2. I distributed the 2 out to get the 2x plus 4. Then I noticed it was a minus sign, so in the purple I changed it to a plus, and then I changed the signs of everything inside, and I combined my numerators now because my denominators were identical. Once I got my numerators combined, I checked to see if I could factor this out any farther, and I can't, so that would be my final answer.